Meow. 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 Okay, so here I am adding some watercolor to my ink drawing. And I started putting down this this darker brown and I started to think, wow, that might be a little bit too dark. It ended up working out fine in the end. So here I go with it. Just kind of thinking carefully about each stroke. Knowing that I'm going to add some lighter brown later. And I just want to get the darks up at the top edge here. Going by the photo, but not going by the photo all the time. Don't become a slave to the photo. Let your creative side take over and do what's right for the piece. And as always, I recommend you watching while listening and then maybe turning the sound off and watching again because there's great benefit to that too. So I want to think carefully about every stroke. And I always do a simplified version of the pattern, the coat pattern. Otherwise it gets too complicated and the eye doesn't know where to look. As long as we know it represents her coat pattern. And this is my rescue baby Shanty. If you haven't met her already. She's got a lot of her own videos on this channel. Always think carefully. It's too easy to overdo it. Um, if I don't hesitate sometimes and think, hey, where do I want to go next? And sometimes I even feel a little bit sad covering up my drawing. I, I've really been trying lately to um, be really subtle with the colors because I don't want to lose my drawing underneath either. I get very attached to my drawing and it, it really is about the drawing for me anyways. So I want to make sure I preserve that without overwhelming it with too much watercolor. And of course everyone has their own style. Definitely not worrying about every fur here, but paying careful attention to the direction of the fur on the tail and everywhere. I just want to capture that floofiness of her tail. And what I'm working with here is a mix of cadmium red and a black that I got in a palette that I got from a garage sale. So I'm not sure what black it is. I'm not sure the name of it, but I don't like to use straight black. However, black is beneficial. I have found um, by adding some warmth, like a nice red, like cadmium red to it, which I'm doing here. And her pattern isn't black. She's a brown cat, which is, from my experience, kind of an unusual color. She's a very unique kitty. She's a kind of a chocolate brown on her brown parts. And her name was Parfait when I got her from the rescue. And I think it's because they figured she looked like a chocolate Parfait. But her name is Shanty now.
just making sure I don't end up with that colored in look. You notice I've left a few bits of white and just kind of in spots, just let the color do as it wants. Just lay it down and it ends up with a nice varied tone. Might be thicker in spots and thinner in others. And right now, while I paint her portrait, she's sleeping at the top of her cat tree. Thinking time. Just kind of adding a bit of dark over top of the light just to kind of shape her face a bit. And she's twitching her tail in her sleep right now. Sleeping very comfortably now after after being rescued from a very difficult life outdoors. She's my spoiled baby now. I just like to get some kind of flicky strokes in there just to kind of get the suggestion of fur. So all I want is the suggestion of fur. Our eye and our brain will work together to tell us that that is fur. We know it's a cat and we have given a bit of a suggestion around the edges and within. This is a lighter part of her. However, I still want unity throughout the the piece, so I I don't over accentuate that part. I'm liking how she's coming along here. I often paint the eyes first, but she has such subtle eyes. Her eyes are really more of a, a muted down of her fur color with a hint of blue. But I like to play the blue up. And I still know it's her. But we'll get to her eyes later. There we go with those flicky fur strokes again. Kind of deciding how much of this tail I actually want to color. And I rarely ever use any brush other than this one. If I had it with me right now, I would read you the name of it. It's a a wonderful quill brush that was recommended at the art store. And it can get give you broad strokes plus those fine points too. I'm kind of a minimalist. I don't like to have to worry about a bunch of different tools.
What I just did there was get the excess paint off my brush, like actually more than anything the excess water because I was finding it was too thin. Just a hint of those ear tufts. I love ear tufts. Such a delightful part of a cat's character. But it's easy to overdo it on them too. I mean, she's not a Maine Coon with those huge ear tufts that they have. Although she may have some Maine Coon in her. I'm thinking she'd be more likely to have Maine Coon in her than Persian because she has a longer face. She doesn't have the flat face like a Persian. But there's other long-haired breeds too. But she's just a mix. I shouldn't say she's just a mix. She's a beautiful mix. Just a suggestion of hair at the edges of her patches. Just so they're not just kind of straight edges would wouldn't do it for me although there are people with a style like that it's, everyone has a different style so go with what works for you take what take what I show you and out of what I show you take what works for you and make it your own and you might come back to the other later maybe didn't work for you at the time but maybe will later Be yourself above all. Because your art should be an expression of your personality. It really should be you. When you can really allow it to be you, that's when you'll find success. Wondering time is always important. Just kind of darkening up this area that actually is a bit lighter because I want unity in the painting so I don't want it too light even though it is lighter on here on her because although I want it to look like her I need to give the painting what it needs to and I'm my aim here is to have her fur direction curve around up towards her face to lead the eye up and around the drawing, the painting, the piece, whatever you want to call it. The picture. It's really about drawing for me and I tend to use watercolor more in a drawing fashion than what a lot of watercolorists would call painting. Um, and there's people that would say that's not the way you use watercolor, but too bad for them. I do what I want. I use the medium in a way that it works for me. Otherwise, what's the point? Don't let anyone tell you how to do your art. Be inspired, but don't be controlled.
So I'm just getting that that muted down color of her fur into her eyes there. Right now it looks like it kind of covered her eyes up, but they're a work in progress. That's why I'm blotting it out because it was a bit too strong. getting a bit of adding a bit of that blue into the body just to unify the painting just a touch and I'm allowing it to help me suggest fur and it gives some her some shadows too and this is just sketchbook paper so I can only go far so far with this but that's mostly what I've been into lately is it's just my sketchbook I got good watercolor paper and maybe I'll drag it out at some point, but right now I'm just having fun in my sketchbook. And there's the end result. So thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time. 